welcome back to another video. In this video, this is just a little bit of a preview, I'm going to be collaging a lot of vegetables and it's going to be just kind of like a walkthrough, a talk through, walk through, <laughs> going through what I was thinking and why I make the decisions I make and just showing you how I, how I went about it. Um, I want to also quickly mention before this video really starts that this is April's Patreon print. I have a Patreon page and if you pledge to the little snips tier, you get a print every month through the post and this is the print this month, I think it's really cute, the print is A5 and that's everything you need to know about that, my Patreon will be linked in the description so if you like the look of that print that is where to get it. So yeah, in this video I'm going to make two collages, a smaller one which is A6 and a bigger one which is A4 and both of them I will end up turning into, into prints when I do my next shop update so if you like the look of them eventually they will be available as prints. But yeah, I'm going to hand you over to past me and I'm going to talk through all the paper that I painted for this piece and I'm going to talk through like my thought process and why I painted each sheet. So um, there that is, there that is, here, here that is, whoa, here it is now. So this is what I've painted, I'm going to do a little paper, paper tour. Uh, so potential parsnip, carrots over here, some other thing down here. Um, Carrots, although looking probably made this a little bit too red and too vibrant. Might not use this. Some of this is usable. I reckon I'll probably use a bit of this down here. Carrots, obviously. This, again, carrots. <laughs> and this one, I was thinking I might do on one of the collages, I think I might do like a dirt base, which everything is built on top of. So I was thinking this could just be the dirt. And then I've got a lot of purple sheets for um, those purple vegetables. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. They start, they're purple at the top. I've got a picture of one. It's like purple at the top and then it fades down into white. So I was trying to do like purple to white gradients. Some of the gradients were more successful than other gradients. Looking at these now, they're not the smoothest gradients. But probably something in there will get the job done. Some other purple vegetable. This, radishes. Uh, it was like, I, I can't remember the name of any vegetable. That's, I just know the pictures. There's a lot of like blob circle oval type vegetables which are like a colour going into another colour. So lots of places where I can have a bit of red with a little white tip. This is just a mishmash of a few things. This I'm trying to get a bit more adventurous with the textures. This could be like a cool looking, again parsnip is the only kind of pale vegetable coming to my mind at the moment. But that was just like dry brushing. So there's probably some nice stuff in there. I saw a picture of quite a yellow looking carrot. Some kind of green vegetable and then these were specifically for the leaves on that purple vegetable <laughs> it's kind of like they had like a green leaf with a little purple gradient at the top so i've got a few of them so those are all my vegetable sp specific textures and i obviously have my giant folder of paper to pick from as well and then let me show you all my sketches so i did these last night um going to bed. The reason I, I wasn't even drawing this to begin with is because every month I have a member on my Patreon on the top tier who gets an original collage so I always ask them kind of what, what do they want this month and this time she requested something with like a seed packet so I don't know whether to just do because the collage I'm going to do now is only A6 so to give you a, a reference on what, how big that actually is. There we go. You're looking at something, this is A6 which isn't a lot of room if I compare it to my hand I can get filled very quickly. Maybe just do two seed packets, kind of at jaunty angles with the soil beneath them, a few leaves for this one, and then I'm gonna do a bigger one, A4, um, cause it'd be nice for there to be a little set, cause if this turns out nice, I'll, I'll make a print of it for the shop update, um, and then it'd be nice for there to be like a vegetable pair, so you can get this with maybe a bigger print. Okay, so now you've seen my paper that I was using and now it's time to move on to the actual collage. For this one I didn't film a lot of it because I didn't realise at the time when I was filming it that I was going to do a whole video about it, but the second collage I do I filmed a lot more of so you'll see a lot more of the process on that one. This one does move a little bit quick. Um, if you want to see a more in-depth video about, well, I mean I didn't really show it in this video, but if you want to see me painting paper because um, obviously in this one all the paper was already painted. Um, I will link the two previous videos below. I made How I Collage and How I Collage Part 2. This 
is I suppose part free, but I don't want to start like labeling them all. I, I just thought it'd be nice to start doing videos which focus in on a specific area because the last two collage videos I made were all about landscapes, but obviously I collage a lot more than just landscapes these days. So I want to start just kind of broadening the video topics. So this one's obviously vegetables, but then I could do an animal one or just get really, really specific with like a video all about fish, <laughs> you know, just things like that. Anyway. I'm collaging a little seed packet. You can see I use my watercolour uh, to paint the little details and this is something I want to start doing a little bit more with my art is just being a bit more mixed media especially with my watercolour because I really do like my watercolour and my gouache. Um, I used to use it a lot more like I, I would do fully watercolour pieces like the whole thing's done in watercolour so it'd be nice to start incorporating that back into my art a little bit more just, just the little details because I mean the, the collage a seed packet is cute enough on its own but then you start adding these little wobbly watercolour lines and it just takes the cuteness to a whole new level um, I just think it looks so cute and also watercolour can be good to just add like you can see me going into the crevices crevices of the peas because I was if I was trying to do that it with a coloured pencil um, because the paper's a bit raised you can't quite get into the corners of, of the peas so watercolour can be quite good because that will seep into all the corners um, well, my tip would be to shade the underneath area before you stick the piece on top because once the piece is stuck on top, it's, I mean, even though it's only just like a thin piece of paper, that tiny little lip of the paper can be quite a hard corner to get into. Um, so yeah, shade before you stick, that's my, t that's my tip. Um, but if you forget to, like I did, watercolour can be good to just get into all those nooks and crannies. Anyway, so here you can see I'm, I'm just cutting out some big big blobs, some big shapes, trying to find the nicest bit on the paper that I really like. So I'd look at the paper that I painted and I think which has the best gradient, the best texture, what from this big A4 piece of paper, what is that little tiny circle that looks the best? So I'll scan the paper and I'll even cut out like 10 shapes before I find the best one. But even like just because you didn't use it on this collage, that shape can come in handy on another collage. So I don't feel bad for cutting out a shape and then not using it because that happens all the time. For this piece, I probably cut cut out 30 vegetables that didn't end up getting used um, so don't worry about that and then I just go in and add final bits of detail with my pencil and my crayons the pencils I use are Faber-Castell polychromo pencils they're quite fancy and expensive but you really don't need fancy pencils for this like any anything will do like all I'm doing is scribbling a little bit so you don't need anything fancy and then the crayons I use are the Neo Color Caran d'Ache crayons and I, I do really recommend them because they can draw light on top of dark really well um, so little details on the leaves that's all done with the neo colors just drawing you know the like veins on the leaves my favorite go-to color for veins on leaves is the neo color uh, oh I don't know how to oh lime green <laughs> the lime green neo color I would really recommend that I use that in almost every collage the lime green and the white are my go-to's anyway so that's the first one. Like I said, I didn't really film too much of the first collage, but this next one I filmed a lot of. So I can talk a little bit more about the process in this one. So this one's A4. So four times the size than the last one. So I've got a lot more room to add in a lot more vegetables. And this one, I didn't want to add the seed packet on either. I really like the seed packet, but this I just wanted to be jam packed with as many vegetables as I could get in there. And this was a lot of trial and error just moving things around you can see at the side of the screen there all the vegetables that I've cut out so before I even started placing anything down I just cut out I'd say around 20 different shapes and um, vegetables are pretty simple shapes really <laughs> they're just circles blobs long triangles pretty easy so well, especially the ones I was using start getting a bit harder if you went into like broccoli territory <laughs> that's those are more complicated shapes, but the ones I would do in mainly circles. So I just would find the best bits on the paper, the little golden nuggets of, of, of goodness on all the, the A4 bits of paper that I painted, finding the loveliest bits of texture. And then I had about, a, like I said, I had a pile of vegetables, which I could then just place on this. The, the background is just um, a piece of paper splattered with a bunch of brown and black paint. And then like I splattered uh, stuff on top of that to give it a bit more texture. So that's the background, really simple, just two big blocks of brown paper. So I knew a lot of the background was going to get covered up as well. Like I wanted 
like 90% of this background to be covered so it didn't really matter what it looked like and here you can see just the the hours of moving shapes around so what you're seeing right now will completely change did it change a lot for it did change quite a bit from what you're looking at now you can see i rearranged this so many times like the carrots were at, at the moment the carrots are in the bottom left hand corner they do stay there actually but it took a lot of attempts of moving them around they, they were in the top corner they were in the middle like they things moved around so much so i think with this kind of collagen it's really good to have all your shapes prepared first and then you can just really play around with the composition then i knew i wanted to group together lots of small shapes to be and then have that surrounded by a few bigger shapes and i was trying to keep my biggest shapes on the edges of the piece and then like all my clusters of small shapes in the middle just because comp compositionally that draws your eye into the middle because when there's lots of small shapes that's quite a busy area so you want your eyes to be drawn into the busiest area and you kind of want your busiest area to be in the middle of the piece because you want your eyes to be drawn into the middle so I kept all the small shapes like the clusters of potatoes, the radishes, the mystery vegetable which I'm not really sure what it is which I might have made up, <laughs> um, all those clusters are in the middle but then you have your bigger shapes surrounding them and that's kind of like a frame um, this way keeping stuff clustered keeps a piece because I, I wanted this piece to be very busy but I didn't want it to be too busy where it, it no longer looked nice so it's finding the balance between the right amount of busy and I did that by clustering my shapes together because then it just adds a little bit of uniform to the piece but in a way that isn't obviously uniform if that makes sense and I also wanted to try and frame the piece with how the vegetables were sitting so the carrots they swoop up around the outer edge creating a bit of a frame and then the oh I don't know the names or anything the vegetable with the purple stems coming out of it is that a turnip I really don't know I should probably research this before I talk about it um, I made sure to have that on the outer edge so that those purple stems again are framing the piece because if I had those purple stems like smack bang in the middle it would just look really odd so I have my long framing shapes like the carrots and the big stems on the outside and my lots of small shapes on the inside again um, I was trying to keep the piece I was also trying to keep the piece quite balanced because there's a lot of textures going on here so it could quite easily become chaotic so also grouping my textures together so like my, my favorite texture on this piece they they're on the parsnips so it's that black dry brushing on top of the lighter background you can see them in the bottom left hand side of this piece at the moment so I love that texture but the issue with that texture is it's a very busy texture like that draws all your attention to it because there's a lot of contrast you have a really light color with stripes of a really dark color on top so your eyes are automatically drawn to areas with the most contrast and because there was a lot of contrast on those pieces I kept them to a minimum I only have two past no uh, how many do I I have three parsnips all with that texture and they're all at the bottom but just to balance it out at the end of this piece I had a little bit of that texture up at the top so that way it balances it out a bit because it was feeling a bit like all your attention was drawn right to the bottom where the parsnips were but by having that texture at the top it, it you know balanced it out a little bit so you know there's a lot of thought which goes into it it might just look like a bunch of shapes thrown down a bunch of circles thrown down but to get those circles to look good together and not just like a chaotic mess it does take quite a lot of planning spreading out your textures spreading out your colors making sure your shapes work well together <laughs> there's a lot of thought that goes into it um for the carrots i worked quite a bit on trying to figure out how to do all the the stems coming out of it because when you look at a picture of, of carrots there's so much green leafy goodness that goes on on top of them that I was kind of struggling to figure out how to make that work in collage but what I figured out worked quite nice is using the crayons to just draw a bunch of stripes on a piece of paper and that works so much better than if I was to cut those stripes out and stick them down uh, it just makes it a little bit more loose and it gets the job done without being too in your face so it's about finding the balance between when is this going to look good as a cut out shape and when is this going to look good as a detail added on top with crayons or pencil um because i will use the crayons a lot for little details that i could cut out with paper 
I said that really weird, paper. <laughs> I could cut out with paper, but would it look better as a wiggly little line done with the crayons? Probably. So for instance, I'll do this on the the veins on the leaves, like the little lines on all the leaves. I'll use a mixture of the crayon and just coloured pencils to add lines, along with a mix of the cut out, cut out strips of paper. And the reason I do that is if it's all done purely just with the crayon, it looks quite flat. But if I do it all with the paper, it's too in your face and it's it draws too much attention. So by doing a mix, it you know adds a bit more variety and niceness. <laughs> I don't know, I just like the way it looks. For the leaves, I found it worked best when I ripped the edge of the paper. I, I did try quite a few attempts at these leaves, cutting them out with the scissors. Whenever I cut it out with the scissors, it looked too perfect and forced so I was trying to like wiggle my hand a bit when I was cutting it like trying to hold the scissors badly so I was trying to cut out purposely bad shape but it still wasn't looking quite as as good as I wanted it to because when you actually look at the the leaves on the vegetables they're such wobbly shapes that it just worked with the rip the rip looks so much better so I would cut out a rough outline of the leaf and then just go wild and try to rip it but purposely wiggly rip and then I, I did go in a, a bit with the scissors to just cut out a few like dints into the leaves as well so there's a, a mix of cut out areas and ripped areas because if everything's ripped then it doesn't like look exciting anymore so it's good to have a mix of rip, ripped and, and, and cut. I found these leaves looked really bad until the, the, the veins of the the leaves were put on so we really had to trust the process with this one it ended up looking quite bad only up until the final details which is adding on all the little lines all the little pointy bits at the end of the shapes but to begin with I was just roughly blocking in everything so as you can see have I stuck yeah so I I, I placed everything in loosely but to give me an idea of the composition so I had most shapes placed in but I didn't glue anything down until a fair few hours into the process and when I did glue stuff down it was loosely stuck so I could peel it up and it'd be fine but then once I had all that my, my big block shapes in then it was the fun bit of adding in the details because at that point you know the composition works you know the colours work together and it's just stress-free adding on little lines and details I loved adding on the little I don't even know what they are really, they don't exist on the actual plant, I just thought it looked cute. Just like a little ring, a light, a light line around where the leaves come out of the, the vegetable. And they did that again with my, my Neo Colour crayon. Um, and then what am I doing now? Just a final bit of shading, final bit of adding the little details. But at this point, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. It, it took a while for me to figure out the composition, so this looked bad for ages. The, and off quite often it does it looks bad before it looks good and with collage it will look bad for the majority of the time because it doesn't start looking good until you have the final details on for ages as well you can see i've not yet put on the, the the leaves on the end of the carrot stems and i put kept putting that off and off and off because i i just really didn't know how to approach it because when you look at a picture of a carrot it's so busy i was like how on earth can i recreate this with paper in the end i simplified it so much with just really simple leaf shapes and you'll see me do that later on but I left that up until the last minute because I was even questioning should I just rip the the stems off and just have the carrots be you know naked without the green bit but you know it really did work with that because it helped frame the piece the leaves around the edge for a while I was trying to add in even more <laughs> detail than there already is like even more shapes for a while I was trying to play around with the idea of adding in like rosemary because on this picture I was looking at there was like a bit of rosemary in with the vegetables and it looked really good so I was trying to place rosemary in it kind of winding up around like the middle section I didn't film any of it though because I didn't actually stuck any of it down but for a while I was trying to do that but you know it w looking back it was a little bit detail overload <laughs> it would have been too much with the rosemary because the rosemary is quite a detailed plant as well it's just so many little lines so in the end it's probably good that i didn't include that but for a while i was thinking about it i even cut out i spent ages cutting out loads of little rectangle strips but you know what it's fine it didn't need it an issue i was facing with this piece which i didn't think would bother me but it did is because the background 
the big rectangle in the background is just that's what it is it's a rectangle with straight edges I did rip a little bit of it so it was a bit wobbly but my main issue with it was I didn't like how you could clearly see that there was a rectangle behind all these vegetables I wanted it to look more like a wobbly edge where the vegetables are the border as opposed to the rectangle background so I went back in and I started trying to rip up a little bit of the background to make it not so obviously a sharp rectangle with like straight lines and then I went in and added on loads of um like potatoes and mainly potato a few potatoes and leaves so I had to go back in and peel up a few shapes some shapes were really stuck down so it was hard but as long as you peel up the colour bit because some of the paper will still if you stuck it down and you try to peel up sometimes the white bit will stay stuck but you can peel up the actual colour bit <laughs> and as long as you've got the colour up it's fine you can glue that back down so it's not really an issue um, but yeah I did go back in I had to rip up quite a few shapes to just shove a few potatoes a few circles under just so it wasn't such a sharp edge anymore and it was more of like a wobbly outline of the shape and I think that worked much better to kind of give the illusion of this cluster of vegetables as opposed to just like these vegetables floating on top of this rectangular shape it kind of made it sit better on the piece I thought I mean it, it was quite a subtle change but I think it really helped because that rectangle was bugging me and here you go this is the finished piece I will show the digital version of this like I did with the first collage because my camera really wasn't doing this piece justice it, I think my camera really struggles with the color green Whenever I do a piece that's green, it, it just doesn't really look right on camera. So I always like to include the digital version as well, because this is what it actually looks like in real life. Well, as close to it as I can get with my editing skills. I'm actually going to try and turn this into a book cover, just for like a pretend book cover for maybe like a, a, a gardening book or even a cookbook. But I've been playing around with it on Photoshop and I think this would make such a cute book cover. Obviously it would need a bit of editing and it needs a title, so if I do actually end up going ahead and making that finished a finished thing, I'll share it on my Instagram and I'm sure it'll go up on my website at some point, just because it's good to show, but I'm trying to get like actual commissions and actual jobs, <laughs> so it's good to show that you can, your work would look good on a book cover and stuff like that. Anyway. I'm getting sidetracked that's not for this video if you like my videos I don't say this often but if you like my video like it and if you're not subscribed and you enjoy collage or just art in general I'm sure you'll enjoy all my other videos so it'd be nice if you could subscribe and what's the other thing that you say comment maybe if you want if you want if you have something to say anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video seeing how I collage some lovely little vegetables um, a reminder my Patreon is linked in the description, my shop as well if you want to get a collage print. These will eventually be on my shop, these vegetable prints as well when I get around to the update in a few weeks. And that's it, that's all from me, thanks for watching, goodbye.